Good morning, folks. The earthquake watch rolls on and the significant quakes continue. In the first 29 and a half days of 2013, there were four significant quakes. There have been five in the last 36 hours. The latest is the third of those to strike the Santa Cruz Islands, actually caused a one meter tsunami that is of absolutely no concern. Cyclone Philang, just hugging that coastline. This is quite the rain event. Europe, this low drives the Atlantic moisture east over land and veers north, bringing precipitation to over half the continent. Temperature in Eastern Europe will be very cold by next week. While Northwestern Australia swelters, it is a bit more mild southwest end in New Zealand. 24 hour precipitation map shows Sydney took a pounding and I wish I could say it was over, but more storms are on the way. Zooming in on India, where cold isn't unusual unless it's in the subcontinent where the Met Office was incredulous of initial reports until confirming multiple deaths from boulder-sized hail. Tornadoes, flooding, hail, and winter storm conditions are making their last stand in the United States today. On the 24-hour temperature delta, you can see the East Coast has cooled off significantly. Let's see why while we make some predictions. These big blue lows spin counterclockwise in the Northern Hemisphere. Front edge pulled north and heated us up first. Now the backside is frosting the land, pulling due south. When the Pacific low moves east, its leading edge will also bring warm air north. That's precisely what the Weather Channel expects to happen by Monday. Russian neutron monitor takes a jump. This appears to confirm the Bartol neutron data from spaceship Earth, but again, Muon network shows falling density. Two gamma bursts last night, both from way up north, one from Ursa Major and the other came out of the constellation Leo. Yesterday's sun story was this filament eruption. I showed the broad scope of the ejecta and now NASA's endless spiral confirms Earth impact expected. NOAA's endless spiral suggests that will happen Sunday. A few hours after that eruption, a much larger northeastern filament snaking beside the dark coronal hole destabilized and released. Satellite images are missing, but you can still see the CME coming out of that top left location where it erupted. NASA's endless spiral shows that it will completely miss Earth. The filament eruptions on the left, but did anyone notice the central destabilization? It will be easier to see now, happened right after the large filament released. It's not big enough to produce a coronal mass ejection, very small, it's split and recoil back into the lower corona was beautiful, however. For the first time since finding this chart, I can correlate it to activity I see on the sun. First. The large dark northern coronal holes are the red area shifting down and the green are the coronal holes on the south that we saw last week. Now as you look here, imagine where that southern filament was in relation to the holes. Folks, this is still new to me, but it appears very clear that the umbral magnetic field position related to the coronal hole magnetics was changing drastically just before that filament erupted. We'll watch for more correlations. Quick look at this intensity gram shows decaying spots headed to the right eyes on the northeastern limb. One looks to be developing and the other might already have complexity. So to recap, we had a coronal hole stream set to impact Earth, a CME from a filament eruption coming as well. The earthquake uptick has been solid so far. Let's hope we can confirm the watch correlation without any more injuries. Eyes open, no fear, it's 6.15 a.m. Eastern time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.